Michael here. Uh, today we're going to talk about guitar strings, about how you can select strings for your guitar and also ways to replace strings yourself. So you don't need to take them to a luthier, you can do it yourself. It's really quite straightforward once you understand the basic principles. Um, whilst we can't cover every type of guitar, I'm going to cover the commonest types. So we'll be looking at replacing strings on an acoustic guitar. Well, this is an electroacoustic guitar, but it doesn't matter, it's the same principle. A classical guitar, which is very different indeed. And a typical electric guitar, as well as an electroacoustic with a, what's called a Bixby type vibrato. So you need to know a little bit about how that works. We're going to start with the differences between the different types of strings. Very, very simply, Guitar, electric guitars rely on magnetism, electromagnetism. So the pickups rely on an electromagnetic field to make the sound. An acoustic guitar relies more on the shape and dimensions inside the body and the woods of the guitar to give you a nice, bright, clear, resonant sound. In the case of the acoustic guitar, it doesn't need the uh, same materials of the strings in order to get this electromagnetic impulse that you need with uh, this type of guitar. So the materials are different and very briefly the electric guitar relies on materials that have got uh, better electromagnetic qualities. That includes steel, nickel, uh, chromium and alloys of those whereas an acoustic guitar tends to rely more on an alloy of bronze or phosphor bronze, which gives a greater sustain um, and a more resonant sound. We also need to talk about the classical guitar. Now those almost always will have nylon strings and some of those nylon strings, the thicker or the heavier ones, or the towards the lower E, for example, they will be wound in a soft metal. But the way that we put those on is, uh, is quite different to the other guitars. Let's talk about this acoustic guitar. You'll notice that on the bridge there are, in this case, a number of what are called bridge pins. Those are simply held in place by pressure so we press those through into a hole that goes into the inside of the guitar and the string is held down because it has a small ring, a metal ring on the end. And that small metal ring is trapped basically inside the hole. It's then transferred up here to the tuners and it is wrapped around this post, this capstan or post at the top in this case, uh, a number of times and I'm going to talk about an easy way of making sure you've got those windings correct. The guitars will also need something called a break angle. Now what that means is when the string goes across something like this nut here it should then dip downwards. You can see this one hasn't very much of an angle on it at all. If it was completely straight then if the, if the headstock, for example, wasn't angled backwards, then you would tend to get a lot of movement sideways and buzzing. Uh, the same thing applies, you may or may not be able to see on the bridge here, that when the string goes over the bridge, it goes down instead of going straight across. And that does exactly the same thing. It helps to keep it from buzzing so much as a result of not having a break angle. Let's talk about string gauges. This is a term that's used to indicate how thick the string is in thousandths of an inch. And it's often on the packet that you buy the strings in, you'll notice that it might say something like 0 0.09, in which case that string is nine thousandths of an inch. And then for an ordinary set, say for example of six strings or even 12 strings, 
they'll be graded in different thicknesses and, and the gauge will increase as the string gets thicker. So depending on what type of string gauge you're looking for, nine thousandths of an inch for example, is very light gauge. It's light gauge meaning that you won't get the same volume from it but it does mean it's easier for you to, to, to finger and it's also easier if you like bending strings then it's much easier with lighter gauge strings than it is with heavier ones. However, heavier gauge strings, for example if you went 13 or 14 gauge, that will give you a more volume and it will also give you a, a, a different type of sound, a more, a more robust, full, clear sound than a lighter gauge one. Players of acoustic guitars tend to uh, use strings from 11 upwards in terms of the gauge. Now when we talk about the gauge we often refer to the 11 or the 9 or the 10 or the 14 and what we're referring to there is the thinnest string. So if somebody says I want a set of 10s then it will be those strings that start with 10 thousandths of an inch and then go up in grades until you get to the thickest one and they'll be staggered um, there's a, a normal pattern of, of, of grade changes to get to the thickest string. With their, an electric guitar, very often you'll find people want to use lighter gauge strings. Not always. This is entirely personal preference. So you will find people often want to use 9, 10 or 11 gauge strings on an electric guitar. It's useful if you're going to change guitar strings to have one of these. It's a string winder and all it does is it means it's easier for you to wind the tuners when it's time to tighten the strings up or loosen them. It's much easier and they're really quite inexpensive. This particular one's got an additional feature where if I go like that I can actually cut the strings as well which is, makes it just ve very easy to use and also with this particular one uh, you'll notice a little notch here that notch is really useful for putting underneath the uh, the pins at the bottom and just popping them out just makes it a little bit easier so these are not expensive but it's worth having one if you're going to keep your guitar you're going to need to change the strings fairly often so here we go as far as frequency of changing strings, by the way, that again is partly due to personal choice and partly if the strings really are rusty and mucky, they're going to sound awful and feel awful to play. So get rid of them. Don't bother with them. If a player is a professional, for example, they're going to change their strings quite frequently because the strings over time will lose their resonance and lose their brightness. Um, so it's something you'll need to just factor in and it all depends on your playing style, your frequency of playing and all the rest of it. The other thing is uh, with strings that they need time to stretch. So when you put your strings on the guitar for the first time and tune the guitar, don't be surprised if it goes out of tune. It's not something necessarily that you've done wrong. It's that the tunes, the strings do need to stretch. And often when we put them on, we actually give them a bit of a stretch to start with anyway and then retune it. After two or three tunings it usually settles down um, and it should be okay after that. So let's begin and I'm going to just do one string on this guitar, one string on the classical guitar so that you can see the principle. After that you'll be able to do it yourself without any trouble at all. First thing I'm going to do with this guitar I'm going to take the tension off the string so and because it's easier to see with the low E, the thickest string, I'll change that one and um, you can see the principle. So I'm turning that down now, I can use my string winder, just pop it on the end there and it'll very quickly take off all the tension so the string becomes very very loose and it's not going to pop out and hit me in the face when uh, it's not, it's not going to pop out and cause any damage. So basically I've got the string here, I'm putting my little notched 
uh, piece of this uh, string winder under here. I don't know if you can see that now. And all I'm going to do now is just lift out that button or pin. You can see that it's got a little groove on there. That groove is important and it's for the string to be able to sit alongside when the pin is in the hole. So I'm taking this one out. Can you see how it's been bent over? It's got that little brass uh, ring on the end. When the when the pin goes inside the, the hole, the, the, the little brass ring will sit underneath and it'll be trapped. You can see that the pin is actually graded, so it's tapered. So it makes a much tighter fit when it goes into the hole in the bridge. Okay, that's loose now. I can just simply pull it off, put the pin somewhere safe. And I can just unwind that and then pull it off and dispose of it. All done, no good anymore, needs to go in the bin. Or recycle, if you can do that, brilliant. So that's the first one off, very straightforward, very simple. Make sure you don't lose your pin. If you're going away somewhere to do something, then pop the pin back inside so you know where it is and it's ready for you when you come back to put the string back on. Okay, now we're going to look at how we replace this, this string. The principle is the same for all of them on this guitar, so I'll just do one so you can see how to do it and then you should be fine. Okay, here we go. Okay, I've, I've removed all of the strings from this guitar uh, so that I can show you how to put one of them back on. Uh, again, these are the pins that go into the bridge here, the back, and they just sit in and they trap that little brass ring at the end. They trap that down inside the hole. So push the, push the string down into the hole, follow it with the, with the peg, but make sure that the little groove on the peg is facing towards the neck end of the guitar so that it can comfortably sit in with the string. And then you just simply push down until it until the the bridge pin locates firmly inside that hole sometimes it'll click like that one did and often then you can find you can the string will still move inside but you pull it up tight and then you go towards the the head end uh, or the head stock now i want to show you a little trick here if you get the tuner and line up the little hole. Can you see the hole just here? If you line that little hole up so that it's pointing down the guitar, take the string, put the end of the string into the hole, pull it all the way through, like that. Now here's the trick. You want these windings to be neat. So what you do is you Look at the distance of that fret, just there. Let me do it this way. Okay, what you do is, you pull the string the distance of one fret. So I'm going to hold it there, and I'm going to pull it down one fret. Now I'm going to put a kink in the string. And then I'm simply going to wind the string on making sure that the string comes on the inside, not the outside, it must come on the inside, and underneath this tail piece here, if you like. And what will happen is that when the string is wound around the capstan or the peg, it will apply pressure upwards on this little tail bit here, and that will keep the string in place. Clever, huh? So let's just use my string winder now and wind it round. Let's soon see which way it goes and that's going the wrong way. So if I go this way, it will start to wind the string around, around, around. Can you see that? There we go, look. And it's going to end up nice and neat underneath. Just push your finger down on that if it flicks up. There we are. Keep that. Right there, out of the way. Okay, here we go. 
So now I'm winding it round and round and round. It takes a few turns before it will settle itself down. Just mind your face with that loose bit there, quite sharp. Just uh, support it with your fingers or your thumb. There we go. And it's going round and round and round, keeping it all the time, keeping your finger on here to keep it pressed down so that the windings start at the bottom of the peg and press upwards. Here we are, look. Now, again, I mentioned that, or I may not have mentioned, but look how neat that is. Okay? The string will stretch. So it's important that we give it a little bit of a stretch to begin with, and then we can put, we can tune it. But don't worry if you find it goes out of tune. You just have to do that once or twice and it'll, it'll start to settle down. But the important thing is, look at those windings. They're neat. Now this is dangerous. We don't need it. It's never going to be needed. So it's important just to trim that loose bit off close to the, to the position at the, uh, at the peg at the top here. Just, just cut this. I've got my little cutters, but you could use a pair of pliers or, or wire cutters. Get right in there, close, and just cut that off. And you don't need that, it's finished. And look what you've got there, a nice, neat, finished job. And it will stay in tune better because it doesn't look like the cat's just had it or it's uh, a load of tangled wool or anything like that. This is going to work perfectly well. That's the simple, easy way to replace a guitar string on a guitar like this that has a bridge pin and just simply put your string down inside the hole, push the pin down until it, very firmly down until you sometimes hear it click, sometimes you won't hear it click, it doesn't matter, just so long as it's down as far as it will go. If it pops out again, just loosen the tension on the string push it back down and hold it, it will stay in position unless there's damage inside the hole. So now it's nice and neat, all finished, ready to go. How's that? That's on the acoustic guitar. Now, I just want to say a few words first of all about electric guitars. In this case, you'll notice a completely different bridge setup. Not to be phased by that, the string, and I'll use this um, bit of spare string here to demonstrate, the string will go into the hole in the back plate all the way through, so just like that, all the way through a little hole in the back plate and it'll come out at the other side, here, go over this string saddle as you can see this one has done and up the guitar. Now the replacement at this end is exactly the same as the one we've just looked at. The principle is exactly the same. Line up the hole so it's pointing all the way down the guitar, push the string in, hold it, pull back one fret, make a, a kink in the string so you know where you are, and then wind it on keeping the string as low as possible so that it, it starts to bunch up this way and that will tighten it against the, the, the part of the string that went through the hole and keep everything tight. And again, you, you may have to just uh, pull the strings a, a few times just to get that bit of stretch out of them. The other thing I want to mention is on some guitars, for example, the ones with the Bixby type vibrato, that's this type of vibrato, I want to leave, leave this on to show you this is on incorrectly. The reason it's incorrect is, do you remember I said about break angles? In this case, the string's almost straight across. That's no good. It should be underneath this bar. So the string goes through a hole in the back there, into this, this rod, there are six holes, goes through the hole over the top of this rod, and then it should go underneath this bar here. And when it comes out at the other side, it's coming out lower down. So you're going to have a break angle. You're going to have that angle of the string going down, which is what you want. You don't want it to be like this. And at the top end, of course, exactly the same. Put this, this, the hole 
in line with the guitar neck, push your string through, hold it, pull it back one fret length and then put a kink in it and then you're ready to go and of course chop off the loose end. That's, it doesn't get any more complicated than that, that's really simple. So you should be able to replace the strings on your electric guitar or your acoustic guitar if you watch this video. Now I'm just going to move across to the classical guitar which is slightly different. Now classical guitar strings uh, are much softer both in terms of the feel of them and also the sound that they make. Uh, they're principally made of nylon but the thicker strings tend to have a soft metal winding as well. Um, the thinner ones are just plain nylon. Uh, the top uh, where they where they fix on at the top they too have a a bar around which the strings can go it's exactly the same way as we looked at with the acoustic guitar and the electric one um, the machines on in or the tuners in this case are on the side very often with classical guitars they're open tuners and the instead of the instead of the uh, the 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 peg as it were coming from underneath they go across this way so they go across and they locate somewhere in the centre of the headstock but then you need to put the string through the hole and wind it round in a similar way to the one that we did with the acoustic and the electric guitar. The big difference is this down at the bottom. Sometimes classical guitars will have a string which has got a, a button on the end which captures it behind the bridge when it's gone through the hole here and over the bridge uh, saddle Generally speaking though, you have to tie them and it's very simple. You put the string through the hole, as you can see here. You need to remember it goes through the hole from the front. Then the spare piece of string goes over the top like that. That's one first position. And then we need to tuck the string underneath. So I'll just pull this out to exaggerate it so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to pull the string out and I'm going to go underneath, it's just literally putting it underneath here. So I'm just going to go through there, under here, and I'll do that once, pull it down, and that will hold the string in place. The stray piece of string, you can either cut that off or some people put it down and capture it behind the string next to it just to keep it neat but you can do either you either way but that will hold perfectly perfectly firmly now can you see yeah okay and then just cut it off here sorted so there we are very simple to replace strings remember the strings are specific for the type of guitar that you have if it's a nylon strings for a classical guitar, uh, maybe phosphor bronze alloy ones for an acoustic guitar, and for an electric guitar that relies on pickups like this one, for example, or this one here, then they need a nickel nickel alloy or a steel string, generally, because they rely on this electromagnetic force to make the sound from the electric uh, for the electric guitar through the amplifier. So there we are, very simple to change your strings yourself just follow these simple guidelines and you should have no problems at all. Happy playing! Bye for now!